Before coming to Italy, these are some expressions you might want to learn. Buongiorno, mi chiamo David, benvenuti sul mio canale. Good morning, my name is David and welcome to my channel. If we're just meeting for the first time, once again, welcome to my channel. I'm David. And on this channel, I talk about everything Italy, but more specifically, I give practical tips for tourists coming to this country possibly for the first time. Come in channel. Let's get started. Let's suppose you want to go from the airport to a specific place in Rome. Here's what you say. Un biglietto, per favore. But they're probably going to ask you exactly where you want to go. So here's what, here's what I would say. Un biglietto per Trastevere. The trains that take you to specific uh, stations in Rome is the regionale train. So in that case, you can just simply say un biglietto per il regionale. If you're looking to go to Termini, however, here's what you ask. Un biglietto per Leonardo Express. And remember, this is the fast train that takes you from the airport to Termini train station, although it's actually the most expensive. It costs 14 euros, but there are no stops. You could, in theory, just go up to the person at the tabaki shop and just say, Reginale, Leonardo Express. I mean, they will give you the ticket. You know, they will understand you. But it is kind of nice to see a few expressions in their language. Thus, the purpose of this video. The next logical question would be, how much are things? And to say that in Italian, all we have to do is use two simple words. Quanto costa? What we can do also is take these two words and add them onto our previous tip. So, for example, you would say, Quanto costa un biglietto per il regionale? Or you can say, Quanto costa un biglietto per il Leonardo Express? Now, if the subject is plural, then you need to say it in a different way. Here's how you do it. Quanto costano i biglietti? How much are the tickets? Now, if you ask these questions, then you are going to need to understand the answer. And the answer is probably going to come in the form of numbers. Now, I can't teach you every single Italian number in existence, but what I can do is teach you 0 to 10. So let's do that right now. Uno, due, Tre, quattro, cinque, sei, sette, otto, nove, dieci. Actually, 11 to 20 might be quite useful as well. Let's do them. Undici, dodici, tredici, quattordici, quindici, sedici, diciassette, diciotto, diciannove, venti. By tens. Dieci. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So let's look at these numbers in a real life situation. Suppose you want two regionali tickets. Therefore, they would say 16 euro, which means 16 euros. Or suppose you want two Leonardo Express tickets. Therefore, this would be 28 euro. Also, please note that the word euro never changes. So suppose you wanted to buy two bottles of water at one euro a piece. Therefore, they would tell you, due euro, due euro. This next one is a bit direct for English speaking standards, but it's perfectly normal in Italian. If you already know what you want, then you can simply say, mi da. And this is basically saying, can you give me? Although, if you translate it literally, it would be, uh, give me. Again, it's a bit direct, but it's normal in Italian. So an example would be, mi da una Roma pass, or you can also say, mi da una bottiglietta d'acqua, bottiglietta. This is a hard word even for me in Italian because there are two double letters. And in the Italian language, the doubles are clearly pronounced like cappuccino. In this case, you want to say una bottiglietta d'acqua. Otherwise, they might give you this, which is a bottiglia d'acqua, or una bottiglia di acqua. It's a bit off topic, but I'll mention it anyway. If you want to ask for a cup of coffee, then you simply say this. Un caffè, per favore. Now, sometimes there's been confusion. Sometimes I've had bartenders ask me, uh, uno, due. I don't know why they ask me this question when I'm the only person standing there. So if that happens, just simply reiterate the un part, which means a cup of coffee. Un caffè, per favore. So for this next part, I'm going to do a little bit of Italian grammar with you. And one important thing to remember is that in Italian, 
there are certain situations where you need to decide between formal and informal language. This doesn't quite exist in English, but in Italian and also many other languages, you need to choose the appropriate word. I'm going to explain this using a verb and then also using a bus scenario. The verb in question is scendere, and this is a very important verb if you're going to take public transportation here in Italy. So here is a hypothetical situation. Suppose you're on a packed tram, bus, metro, whatever, and the person in front of you is at the door. This is the door where you have to get off. So if you want to ask this person if they're getting off, and if this person is somebody that you don't know, or is quite simply uh, a person who's older than you, you can simply say, scende, or you can also say, scende la prossima, which means, are you getting off at the next stop? So this would be an example of asking somebody formally um, if you're getting off. I suppose the English equivalency would be, ma'am, excuse me, are you getting off like ma'am or sir? If, however, you're a young person and you want to ask another young person if, they, if they're getting off, you, you simply just change one letter, you change the E to the I, and you say, scendi, scendi la prossima. If, however, you have multiple people in front of you, at least two or more, then you can simply say, scendete, or scendete la prossima. This next one I've talked about in a previous video, but I think it's worth mentioning again. If you're on a crowded metro, for example, and you need to get through a lot of people to get to the door to get off, then you simply say, permesso, permesso, and in essence, you're asking for permission to get by people. If you're unsure where you are, or if you're not quite sure where you want to get off, and you want to ask somebody uh, what the next stop is, you say it in this way. Mi scusi, qual è la prossima fermata? Now, the mi scusi, I've also used in previous videos, and this is simply saying excuse me, but in a formal way. But again, uh, there's formal and informal in Italian. So if you want to be informal, if you see somebody um, who's the same age as you, or if it's a kid, then you would say scusa. Scusa, qual è la prossima fermata? Spero che la mia pronuncia sia buona. Asking for directions and also giving them, in my opinion, is probably one of the hardest things uh, that you'll have to do, and this is why I've saved it for last. It's difficult because you never really know how the other person is going to respond. Asking for directions really isn't that difficult. So let's say that you're in Rome, you're lost, and you want to find the Colosseum. You stop somebody and you simply say, Mi scusi, dov'è il Colosseo? In essence, the dov'è is like saying dove è, where it is, but in a spoken in Italian we say dov'è. Dov'è il Colosseo? Dov'è il bagno? So suppose they tell you to turn left and to turn right, then in this case they would say gira a destra or gira a sinistra. Go straight and turn right would be, and turn right would be vai dritto e gira a destra. However, the way to say keep going straight I feel is a little bit different between English and Italian and it's worth explaining. An Italian would say sempre dritto which means always straight. It doesn't really come naturally to me in English. I would say keep going straight, but if you translate literally word for word, uh, it does lose something in the translation. When they say keep going straight, they will say sempre dritto. Another word that you would probably hear when asking for directions would be semaforo. This means a traffic light or an intersection. So if you want to say after the traffic light, you would say dopo il semaforo. You try it. How would you say after the traffic light, turn right? You would say dopo il semaforo, gira a destra. They could also say at the traffic light. So in this case, you would say al semaforo. So try it. At the traffic light, turn left. Al semaforo, gira a sinistra. Now here in Rome, you have a lot of public fountains where you can drink water for free. But if you want to ask if you can really drink the water, then you want to ask it in this way. Si può bere l'acqua? In essence, you're asking, can we drink the water or can one drink the water if you translate it literally? A classic piece of Roman culture are the little fountains at street level and they're called nazoni. Because if you think about it, it looks like a little person with a big nose. Bonus tip.
Well, if you think about it, this whole video was pretty much a frase italiana della settimana. However, I do want to give you something a bit more complicated that you can use. Complicated, but it can certainly come in handy. So this phrase you can really use more in a bus situation. If you're on the bus and you don't quite know where to get off and you need the driver's help, you simply go up to the driver and you can say, Mi scusi, devo scendere a Colosseo. Mi dice quando arriviamo? That's going to do it for my video for today. I really hope you liked it. I really hope you got a lot of value out of it and I hope you learned something. If you did, please smash the like button as this is wonders for my channel. Please consider subscribing and also hit the bell because when you do um, these two, subscribing and also hitting the bell, then you won't miss any of my future videos. So when they come out, you'll be notified immediately. Also, I would love to hear your thoughts on today's video. So if you have any questions, then leave me a comment below. And also, if you want to reach out via email, then go uh, to the bottom of the description and you will find it there. Grazie mille per l'attenzione. Ci vediamo alla prossima. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.